Hello and welcome. A couple days ago, I got in the mail a couple of Palo Alto PA440 firewalls. And so I thought, hey, let me turn the camera on and we'll do an unboxing of one of them and walk through the initial bootstrap configuration of a Palo Alto firewall. All right, so here it is. And let me go ahead and get a knife and let's open it up. All right, so here it is. It says, don't forget to register your device at support.paloaltonetworks.com. Fantastic. I'll set that to the side. And then here are some accessories. And I'll pull those all out as well. And then I'll go ahead and remove this box to give us some more room to play with. All right, so here's the accessories. I'll set those to the side for a moment. And here is the, the bad boy itself. So we'll go ahead and take off the plastic here, put that to the side, and let's open this up. And we'll pull it out. Oh my gosh, I love this thing. So this is the baby bear, the current baby bear of the Palo Alto Firewall family. It is a PA440, and it probably weighs, I don't know, maybe three or four pounds. It's uh, pretty solid. And the top here, it looks like a giant heat sink. Then it has inputs on the back for a couple of power supplies for fault tolerance. Let me zoom in there so you can see it. So there's power one and power two. And let me flip it over and take a look at the front. So here on the front, it has eight gigabit ports. So this is port number one here is for zero touch provisioning. And then here's the management port for out-of-band management. Here's the console port. They also have a USB connection here. Then there's two USB ports. And then there's some status lights over here. So I'm going to remove this little sticker over port number one here. And let's put this to the side. Now, as far as the other goodies here, let's take a look and see what they've given us. So we'll open this up, remove the contents. All right, so first we have a power cord. Fantastic. Nothing too special about that. Standard power cord. So we'll move that to the side. And then here we have an Ethernet cable with the RJ45 connectors on each end. Then we have what looks like a mounting kit. We can mount it on the wall if you wanted to. Then we have some screws and some anchors. I guess that's also part of the wall mounting option. Fantastic. And then we have, what is this bad boy? Let's take a look. Oh, no way. Yes. <laughs> uh, this is a console cable. So it's a console cable we can use from our USB port on our computer. And it looks like a micro B connector here that goes in the console port on the actual firewall itself. So when I looked at that earlier, I thought it was a USB-C port. However, based on the cable they gave us, this must be a, a micro USB connector. So let me go ahead and just verify that real quick. So sure enough, that plugs into there and that's great. And that way you can get this device, plug this end into your computer, use a terminal emulator and start configuring it immediately. That is once we supply power to it. So let's go ahead and get out the power. So here's the power. And I'm going to use one of my oldest tricks in the book regarding this power adapter, this transformer. I'm going to label it. And that way, as time goes on, if you have transformers in a bin or in a box or you have multiple transformers, if you label it what it's for, it's a lot easier when you need to identify it to recognize what that transformer is. Because the font sometimes is super teeny on the back regarding the voltages and so forth. So I'll get up my fancy dancy pen and I'll say PA for Palo Alto 440. And that way, when I see it in the future, I'll know exactly what it's for. So let me go ahead and take the power cable, which is right here. I'll plug this over here into my power strip, and I will plug the other side here into the transformer, just like that. Then I'll take this power connector, and on the back side here, I'm going to connect this into the power connector number one. So I'll go ahead and slide that in, and then there's a little wheel nut that we can turn, and that will prevent it from sliding off. All right, and let me make sure the lights are on, and they are. So our next task is to take this console cable, I'll plug this into my computer, and let's finish the initial bootstrapping of this Palo Alto PA440. Now, just a few moments ago, I didn't get to the console fast enough, but it asked me about, do I want to continue with zero touch provisioning? And because I didn't get to it in time to answer, it automatically started going forward with that. So I want to do it manually. So I'm now going through the process of a factory reset, just so we can start from zero. And then once this is done, we can do the initial bootstrap config regarding the management interface, its IP address, the mask, and a default gateway that it can use. So this will just take a few more moments and then we'll start from scratch. All right, it says the factory reset was a success. I'll arrow down to reboot and press enter. And in just a few moments, it'll initialize and we'll have a chance to do the initial bootstrap configuration on a virtually <laughs> brand new firewall. All right, so here it's asking, do I want to exit the zero touch provisioning mode? And I'm going to say, yes, I do want to exit that. So I'll type in Y-E-S and press enter. It's going to say, are you sure? I'm going to say Y for yes and press enter. Otherwise, it's going to go through the zero touch provisioning process and not allow me to do the manual configuration here. 
So previously, I didn't either get there fast enough or I pressed enter by mistake. So it said, no, I don't want to stop the zero touch provisioning. And that's why I need to do the factory reset. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and give it four or five minutes to fully initialize. And then we'll go ahead and log in with the default username of admin and the password of admin. If we attempt to log in as admin with a password of admin too quickly, well, it's not quite ready. It won't let us log in. So I'm going to give this about four or five more minutes and then we'll come back and we'll log in as admin with the default password of admin, at which point it's going to ask us to change the default password. So it's been a couple of minutes. Let's go ahead and log in as admin, press enter, and the default password is admin. And so now it's asking me to go ahead and change the password. So I'm going to put the old password of admin in one more time. And then the new password I want to set, I'll press enter. And then I'll confirm the new password by typing it in again and pressing enter. And I must have mucked up the password. Let me try that one more time. And there we go. So now in this Palo Alto firewall, if we do a show system info and press enter, currently it wants to use 192.168.1.1. Now I'm not yet plugged in with the ethernet port to my management interface. So before we plug this into my network, let me go ahead and change the IP address for the management interface. So I'm going to hit Q to stop the output here. And currently we're in operational mode. So we'll go into configuration mode to make the changes. So we'll type in configure and press enter. And now we're in configuration mode. And here are the commands I want to go ahead and input. Effectively, it's set device config system. And then we're going to set the IP address, the mask, the default gateway. And we're also going to set a couple of DNS servers up. It's also possible to put all these commands using one string of text with set device config system and then IP address, blah, 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 netmask, blah, 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 default gateway, etc. I just chose to use four lines to do it. So I'm going to copy those, right click, put them in my buffer, and then come back here to secure CRT, right click. So it's giving us an opportunity. This is secure CRT, giving us the opportunity to confirm our details of this paste and we'll click on paste. So now we have those entries as far as the IP address, the default gateway, the mask is going to use, and the primary and secondary DNS servers. And now this is in what's called the candidate configuration. It's not active yet on the firewall until we commit it. So we'll type in commit and we'll press enter. And that moves the configuration effectively from the candidate configuration over into the effective running config. So currently this is job four. It's in progress. We can do a control C and it'll just keep going in the background until it's done. We can also check on the status by doing a run show jobs ID four and that'll show us the status of that job. So the result is pending, it's not quite done yet. All right, it's been another few minutes. Let me go ahead and just check on its status, and it is done. So right here it shows the result okay, and status fin for finished. So now if we do an exit to get out of configuration mode, and we do a show system info and press enter, now we have this IP address that we're using now for our management interface, and the firewall can use this as its default gateway. So now this is configured on the firewall, Next, let me go ahead and let's take this management port right here. That's the one we just configured the IP address for. And let's plug that into my network. So here's one end of that cable. I'll go ahead and plug it in here. And then I'll take the other end of this Ethernet cable and I'll plug it into my lab network. All right, the other side's plugged in. I now have a link indicator. Fantastic. Now let's also verify that this firewall can reach out and connect to servers on the internet. So now that the ethernet cable is connected to the management port and it has a default gateway, let's verify we have internet reachability and let's go ahead and do a ping host 8888, which represents a Google server. Fantastic. So we'll do a control C and let's also try a name that'll help verify DNS is working. Let's ping host www.paloaltonetworks.com and press enter. And that works. We'll do a control C to stop that. Fantastic. We should also verify that we can get to the graphical user interface for managing this firewall also at its management address at 192.168.1.18. Let's try that now. All right. We don't trust the certificate authority because it's a self-signed cert. We'll click on advanced and proceed. We'll log in as admin with the new password I set at the command line and click on login. And then we take the next steps to make sure that this firewall is both registered and licensed with Palo Alto and then start configuring it to put it to work. So thanks for joining me in this box opening and the initial bootstrap config on this Palo Alto firewall. And I'll see you in another video soon.